Hi everybody, welcome to our next lecture on electrostatics or static electricity. Uh, here we're going to get into a little more of the math that's involved. I know, yay math. Um, and to begin with, I want to start off with something called Coulomb's Law. Um, Coulomb's Law is a law related to the idea of how electrical charges interact in terms of force. And so Coulomb's Law says this. The electrical force between charges is directly proportional to the product of their charge and inversely proportional to the square of the distance separating them. Now, if we think about the lecture a while ago under gravitation and Newton's law of gravity, you might remember that Newton's law of gravity said the gravitational force between masses is directly proportional to the product of their mass and inversely proportional to the square of the distance separating them. In other words, it sounds like the exact same law. And in fact, it almost looks like the same thing. We have the electrical force is some constant K times the product of two charges, Q1 times Q2, over R squared. K is called Coulomb's constant and has a value of 9 times 10 to the 9th Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared. Kind of similar to remember with the gravitational force. Okay. Both involve a constant, gravitational force g, which was 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. Um, notice that the Coulomb's constant is very big, a 9 followed by 9 zeros, and that's because charges are so small. Where the gravitational constant was extremely small, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, uh, because the masses of planets tend to be very large. Uh, but they both have that same idea, directly proportional to the product of either mass or charge, but inversely proportional distance squared, which means, once again, as distance gets bigger between two objects, the force decreases by 1 over r squared. So let's look at a math example of both and compare the two forces. So here it says, determine the gravitational force and the electrical force between two charges, each which have a mass of 4 to the minus 25 kilograms and a charge of 5 to the minus 15 coulombs, and they are 20 millimeters apart. Um, first of all, of course, a quick conversion that 20 millimeters is 0 0.02 meters. Got to be in standard units. Okay, so let's start off with the gravitational force. G, M1 m2 over r squared. g, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. Now the mass, 4 times 10 to the minus 25, and they're both the same. So 4 times 10 to the minus 25. And they're separated by 0 0.02 meters squared. That gives you a gravitational force of 2.67 times 10 to the minus 56 newtons. Wow, that's an extraordinarily small amount of force. I mean, yes, they are very small particles, but that's a really, really small amount of force. Now let's look at the electrical force that would exist between them. K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. K, Coulomb's constant, 9 times 10 to the 9th. The charge, 5 times 10 to the minus 15 coulombs, and again, they're both the same. By the way, they're both positive, which means they'd be a repelling force, where the gravitational force would be a attracting force. That gives an electrical force of 5.63 times 10 to the minus 16 newtons. Now, I know you're saying that's a pretty small force, but look at the two compared to each other. Okay, <laughs> one is something like 10 to the 40th times smaller than the other. Um, now, if you remember that there were four fundamental forces of the universe, and that the electromagnetic force was the second strongest force in the universe, and the gravitational was considered to be the weakest, and this is a good example why. At this atomic level, the electrical force is way more powerful than the gravitational force. So, even though these things have mass, and gravity will pull on it, try to pull them together, the electrical force of repulsion is so great that the gravity wouldn't even matter. So although these forces are similar um, in terms of how they act, they are very different. Remember, gravity only has the ability to pull, but the electrical force could either pull or push, um, making them very different in that way. 
but they are both similar by that 1 over r squared relationship. That's one of the key things that is very similar to both. Also, they are both capable of producing what we called action at a distance. Both have the ability to apply a force to something without physical contact. Now, back when we talked about gravitation, we talked about the gravitational force, and then we talked about something called the gravitational field. How, for example, a planet can radiate out this gravity, this gravity field, um, from it. And the farther you get from that planet, the weaker that gravity field gets. Well, it turns out that electrical charges also produce a field, an electric field. Now again, remember, a field is a region in space where force will have a specific value, but it can vary at different points. So the electric field tells you how strong the charge is at any point. In other words, how much force it has the ability to apply to another charge should it be in that point. The way we calculate the electric field strength kq over r squared, because it's generated by a single charge. Now notice that looks similar to the electric force, except we've remo removed one of the q's. The symbol for electric field strength is capital E, convenient. Uh, the unit of the electric field strength is the Newton per coulomb. But I want you to notice that, of course, that 1 over r squared relationship, which means the field gets weaker and weaker, its ability to have a force gets weaker and weaker the further you get away from the charge but it's very similar to the gravitational field strength. Again, even the equations look similar. But again, the electric field has the ability to either push or pull on something that enters the field, where a gravitational field can only pull on it. So, where a mass has its gravitational field only able to pull, Okay, it has that gravitational field that gets weaker and weaker with distance. The electric field, which can push or pull, talk about that a little bit, also radiates out from that charge, both getting weaker for distance. Now, again though, one object makes a field. One mass makes a gravitational field. One charge makes an electric field. We don't get a force until a second object enters that field. In other words, it takes one object to make a field, but it takes two to make a gravitational force or two charges to make an electrical force. One makes a field, two makes a force. And again, directly proportional to the amounts, inversely proportional to distance squared. So, let's look at an example. Determine the electric field strength 50 millimeters from a 6 NC. Ooh, that stands for nanocoulomb charge. Okay, so we've got a little converting to do here. Um, if Q is 6 nanocoulombs, well, nano is 10 to the minus 9. So this is actually 6 times 10 to the minus 9 coulombs in standard unit. Um, our distance, 50 millimeters. 0.05 meters. So the electric field strength at any location 50 millimeters from this charge would be kq over r squared. k is 9 times 10 to the 9th. q 6 times 10 to the minus 9, 6 nanocoulombs. Distance 0.05 squared. Don't forget to square that value. Often a big mistake forgetting to square something which gives an electric field strength of 2.16 times 10 to the 4th newtons per coulomb. 21,600 newtons per coulomb. Okay, so it has the ability to provide 21,600 newtons of force per coulomb of charge. Now, a coulomb is a huge amount of charge. We're only talking about a small amount of charge. Now, the second question says, I now, from whatever my 6 nanocoulomb charge is, I bring in another charge of 4 nanocoulombs to that location 50 millimeters away. And I want to know what the electric force is between these two charges. Well, there's, we could do this, of course. The electric force is K, Q1, Q2, over R squared. But I want you to notice something real quick. K, Q over R squared, that's the electric field that we already just found. 
which means I can get or derive another equation for electric force that says electric field times charge, as long as it's the same location. So the easy way to do this is take that electric field strength, 2.16 times 10 to the fourth, and multiply it by a 4 nanocoulomb charge. 4 nanocoulombs means 4 times 10 to the minus 9. Nano is 10 to the minus 9. Don't forget that. Nano, 9. It's pretty easy. And that gives us a force of 8.64 times 10 to the minus 5 newtons of force. Okay. Now again, that doesn't seem like a lot, but for small particles, it is a lot. So, that's another way we can now calculate the electric force. The electric force can be found if we know the electric field strength times whatever the charge is. Not too bad, right? Now one of the difficulties in understanding how charges interact or why they do what they do is to understand the interaction of these fields. It's really the interaction of fields that result in a lot of the forces going on. And because we can't actually see charges and we can't really see what their fields look like, uh, scientists came up with sort of an idea of representing them using something called electric field lines. And electric field lines are used to represent the direction at which the field acts and how strong the field actually is. Now, there are three rules to drawing electric field lines. And they don't really make sense until you see them sort of drawn out. The first rule says that electric field lines must begin on a positive charge and or end on a negative charge. And for a single charge, lines begin or end at infinity. So I'm going to show you this in two ways, once on paper and once sort of on a simulation. So our first rule says that, for example, if I've got a lone positive charge, then the electric field lines are shown to begin on the positive and go away from it towards infinity. Now, as the lines go away, they get farther and farther in part. That indicates if the lines are far apart, you're getting weaker and weaker. So that's what the electric field would look like around a positive charge. For a negative charge, a lone negative charge, they come from infinity. Now notice, of course, the closer you get to the charge, the closer the lines come together, indicating the electric field is strongest next to the charge, weakest still farther away. So that if I have a positive and negative, well, the lines must begin on the positive and end on the negative. They kind of look like this. And notice that kind of shows a bit of attraction as they do that. Now let's look at the same thing in terms of a simulation. For example, if I have a single positive charge here, notice that the electric field radiates out from it in all directions towards infinity and is very powerful, as okay, so here's a field sensor, very powerful near the charge but then gets weaker and weaker as you get further and further away. A single negative charge, the electric field shows it comes from infinity and into the charge. The same rules still apply though. The field strength is strongest near the charge and gets weaker further away. However, if I have a positive and a negative, as you can see, the field lines come out of the positive and go into the negative. The second rule says that the number of field lines is proportional to the amount of charge. Now, what that means. Let's say I have two charges near each other. One has a value of positive 3 and the other of negative 1. Well, first of all, the first rule says that if I was drawing field lines, they come out of the positive and go to the negative. Now, for example, right now there are three lines touching each one. That would say that they were equal. So what I actually have to do is this. Now notice, there are nine lines coming out of the positive three and only three going in. So that's nine plus 9 to negative 3, which is the same thing as plus 3 to negative 1. The number of field lines represents the strength of the charge. Now, what you'll notice here again in the simulation is I've got 
a positive 3 here and a negative 1. So you can see that it is much, much more powerful here. There are a lot more field lines coming off of here than are going into here. Okay, all these field lines are coming out of here, only a couple going into there. Um, again, if you look at the field sensor, you can see that it's very powerful around here um, and not qu quite as strong around the negative charge. Much more powerful around the positive, weaker around the negative. The final rule is that no two field lines can cross. Now this is very important, especially when you have like charges. So for example, if I had two positive charges, well field lines are only allowed to begin on a positive, they can't end on a positive, and field lines aren't allowed to touch. So what would happen is the field lines would have to do this. Now notice they're coming out of the positive but not crossing. Okay, and that actually kind of shows that they're sort of repelling each other. Now, what would the negative version? Well, it would look the same way, except that field lines have to end on a negative charge. So, for example, if you look at two negative charges here in the simulation, you'll see the field lines are all coming in. Um, and if you look actually at the strength of the electric field, you'll notice there's a point somewhere right in here where it pretty much goes to just about zero. Okay. And that's because this is a point of no electric field because the fields are repelling each other. Equally, if I had two positive charges, again, you sort of get that repelling here in the middle where there's sort of no field lines because they push against each other, causing them to repel. Okay, so that's um, the idea of both Coulomb's law for electric force and the idea of electric field lines. Uh, remember again that Coulomb's law for electric force is very similar to the gravitational force. Um, both are proportional, directly proportional to the product of something, and inversely proportional to the distance squared. The electric field strength is very similar to the gravitational field strength. Keep in mind, one object makes a field, but it takes two objects to make a force. See you next time.